Hey friends, welcome back to this part two of this tutorial on feature extraction and interactive app for 3D Point Cloud within Python. Last time what we covered was everything that went until pre-processing, point cloud feature extraction, neighbor definition and relative featurings, right? If you missed that, I encourage you to check the other video that cover all about feature extraction. And now what we're going to do is actually the super fun stuff, which is first automating everything. So taking everything that we did, looping that and scaling for the full point cloud. And then after we'll dive on to step eight, which is visualization and interaction. So right, visualizing in Python and creating this threshold that we'll be using to get some part of the data based on the feature that we had. And then we'll export part of the whole point cloud with the features to thereafter used a segmentation technique with resolving. I will show you cases and application for labeling your data set. And the goal is thereafter to have the ability to leverage these features for your 3D machine learning project and creating 3D AI models. If that sounds good to you, then let's get started already at step seven. All right. Now the next stage um, is to automate right but don't worry thereafter with the visualization but we can already automate all of this to have that on the full point cloud prepare the feature matrix and um, basically visualize then thereafter so to automate on the full data set we are preparing a feature matrix and here i'm giving you a very deep trick something that will help just compress the number of libraries that we need right because you could do that with pandas very easily as well but i will show you how to use structured array with numpy so for that we are going to create a um, data frame kind of elements or dictionary called dt which has names and formats so every format is float and the name is the name of all of our features planarity linearity omnivariance verticality and x and y and z the high and the low which are nine features that we compute on the point cloud right and then i will initialize an empty um, numpy array with the length of the the points so 500,000, and the d type dt it will create all the columns and initialize that and then what i do afterwards is i initialize all of my features as an nin value not a number all right, so now if I were to check out what features is, this is what we have, right? Planarity, linearity. And what is really nice now, we don't need to use um, indexes to search certain elements. We can directly use like the name of the feature that we want, planarity. And if I do that, you see that it extracts already the array kind of a data frame. So this is very nice. It will help us a lot to be more clear in the code that we write and to be sure that we select the right feature, right? So now let's loop and automate. First thing that I want to do is compute the point number that we will use thereafter in the loop. And in the loop, we are going to time our loop. And for each index in range of PTS number, right? So 500,000. We will extract and use the PCA that we defined before and get that into our two little um, variable. And then after we are going to um, just pass the featuring function, PCA featuring, and make sure that it fills our features. So features planarity index, right? Features linearity index and so on will be PCA featuring and very nice. Then afterwards, if uh, we have like a number of neighbors, which is above two, so minimal three, we are going to actually make the selection and compute what we had before. So the feature high and feature low um, like that. Right. And at the end, we are just going to time and print the time of the computation. And that's done for the looping. Right. I went really quick here. Don't hesitate to dive deep to understand better what I did. Now I'm going to execute, but before executing, it, this is going to take around two minutes, I guess. And that is it. We have our computation on the full point cloud that is done. That took a little below two minutes to compute all the features. Now it's time to actually check out what that means with PyVista. And this is a very 
quick way to plot all of that. Um, and I just change every time the feature. So I, I took the line before, right? And I render everything as a sphere. So I'm going to execute that. And as you can see, that is the first feature, which is the distance to the high point. Look how now nice that is. You can already see here that you will be able to leverage that, right? To extract the trees pretty nicely, right? So that is the first thing that I wanted to show you. The second thing is the planarity. So the planarity, it's shown here. Oh, very cool. So all the ground is mostly planar and the trees not so much. The houses depends on which spot you are in, right? But you have some kind of noise. So it means here we could adjust, for example, the scale of which we used here only 20 nearest neighbors for all of these PCR based features, which may be not the best strategy. We could use the radius search, Maybe that will give you something better. Now, what do we have here? Um, this is the verticality. So again, this is a bit redundant, maybe with planarity or a bit distinctive. We have something though, is that I forgot to make an absolute value of the normal, which means that one minus something, we have something um, duplicated. So that could be addressed pretty easily. Um, but I will leave it there. Here, it's a bit more distinctive that planarity to get only the ground. And that is very nice. We could use that to get only the ground points. Now, what is that is the omni uh, variance. I think I have mismanaged what we should have. Ah, no, 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 I don't. It's just that we have points that are really outliers uh, that skew the distribution, um, but it's okay. For example, what I could do here is put true, right? And comment all of this and check again. As you can see, yes, we have points, but they are very, very there and they annoy us, right? So that's it for the first hand visualization. Um, now I want to show you something super interesting with PyVista. Actually, what I showed at the beginning, which is having the ability to use a threshold, so it should create quite, kind of an app to um, thresholds, uh, the features to extract and segment based on histogram thresholding using the features that you computed. So the first thing that we have to do, and it's important to understand, is that we actually have to pass the features inside of our variable PCD um, PV, right? And give them a name that is relevant. So D high, for example, right? And the same will be for D low. And for each of these, we have to pass the, the scala field, which is our features set, feature highs, and feature low. Maybe before executing that, we can check out features or feature high to check out what we have. So if I press feature highs here, yes, we have one, not a number, but you, you have a lot of them. So that would be very nice as well to see how that behaves inside of the plotter. We need to use a different function. We cannot use plot directly with that. We have to set up a plotter. So it's an object, a plotter, so pv.plotter. And then we'll add an interactive thresholding tool to show everything. And to that, just p dot add underscore. It's a mesh object. Okay, we don't have triangle and threshold. Um, and then we pass a bunch of parameter. And the first parameter is pcd underscore pv or variable. The second one is the scalars that we want to use. In this case, it's for example the high, right? and um, or the low, yeah, let, let, let's keep the high. We give a title and uh, um, after we will press the show. So let me have a title, the distance to high point in meta. All scala will leave it to true. We will still render points as sphere. We increase the point size and we show. Are you ready for what's happening? I just press that and beautiful, you see that you have your scene with a capacity to filter out, right, based on exactly the distance from the high point. And that's very interesting because we could um, use that to filter out exactly the points that we were to to keep, or let's do that, but with the, the low directly. And in that case, yes, we have the distance to low points. So that means that we could just get rid of all the ground points very easily. And you have also the values here and the ramp, right? Imagine what you can do with only that. Um, it 
makes it very, 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 very nice to actually label your data sets, for example, uh, in this way, or to segment or to play with it uh, very quickly. Now, there is a trick that I spent a lot of time trying to figure out for you, which is interactive selection and remanence, if I could call that remanence, um, basically making a selection after thresholding to play with afterwards, right? So to do that, um, we do the same thing, except we'll add a specific line uh, that I will show you just now. Okay, so I took everything and the line is enable mesh picking. And I put that here and after that, I press the show. And doing that, we can actually, so threshold, right? So I could threshold um, like this, just get rid of the ground. Yeah, like this. And uh, now I press P and all the remaining points are now in an object. When I close, it's, it's remanent, which means that we could then play with this little element by calling again P and saying picked mesh. All right. And the last picked object will be then saved in the selection. Um, and yeah, I, I can show you what you can do then thereafter with that. If that works for uh, everything, I'm not sure that's doubling up on that. No, yeah, yeah, that you cannot do, but you can basically export the selection. And that's what I'm going to do here. Uh, I give the selection path result segmentation live, obj selection p dot picked underscore mesh. And you have to pass this, you don't need to understand that. But basically what you do is have the plotter add the, the mesh of the selection that we have to the plotter only, right, and export the object because of this very weird unstructured grid, that's the only way so far that I found that works uh, straight out of the bat. So if I execute that, yeah, I made a mistake. So it's results directly segmentation live. Sorry about that. Uh, error root unable to open. That's what was written. So now if I go into results, I have segmentation live OPJ, which I could open with MeshLab or your external software. Yes, I cannot export in PLY, it's OBJ, but as you can see, we don't have the ground anymore, only the, the, the part that I left here, right? So it works. We have the selection out of the thresholding that we had, and this is marvelous. Now, the last thing that I wanted um, to maybe show is actually to load that and visualize back to, to show you that you have the way to go back, right? So PCD underscore PV2, read the selection path that we put there and put the item lightning. So that's what I'm doing. And as you can see, right, we have our selection that is red. So that is marvelous. Beautiful. Now let's go on to the step nine. We're closing into the end, which is merging with coordinates and saving the results. Um, here we have some, some sorts of things that we need to take care of. So the first is actually importing a specific little NumPy module, right? Called rec function, you will see why in a moment. And we are going to initialize the same way we did for the features, our data frame with our X, Y, and Z coordinates. That is the only way to combine two structured data frame in an efficient way. So I'm creating a structured, uh, not data frame, but NumPy array, with the structured feature array and I will concatenate them. That's what I'm doing. So first I'm initializing the same way a coordinates empty and then I'm basically filling my coordinates with the points PV variable of X, Y and Z. And after that, uh, the point cloud featured, right, will be merged with this function RFN that I imported, match arrays, chords and features, X, Y, Z and features. And then the last stage is to actually plot, uh, not plot, but save with NumPy as a TXT, so as key file, right, in the result folder. So PCD with features, I will call that. Um, I save the PCD features variable and the format is a float. The delimiter is this and the comma, sorry, the header will actually, uh, what I'm doing here, it's a bit weird, but I'm creating a string that is joined by comma and the string is based on DT2 names and DT names, right? And when I do that, it's in the result folder, so it's nice. I'm waiting for that to be finished. Yes. And now if I go in the result folder, I have my PCD with features, which I could then directly open into Cloud Compare. 
and XYZ, planarity, linearity, omnivariant verticality. And this is wonderful. This is really truly a feat if you went at, up until there. Absolute kudos to you. You are part of a few uh, individuals that have the ability to do that in just a matter of, of lines of code um, instead of using existing software that will do only a limited amount of what you need, right? So I would just apply there, uh, skip the first line and extract the Scala field names for the first line. I apply and as you can see, I now have my point cloud with the features that we computed and this is an absolute wonder. So RGB was already existing, but Scala field, we have now, oh, it's not the, the, the good one. I dropped the, the RGB, but as Scala field, we have planarity, uh, we have linearity, and you can see that you identify the pole really nicely there. We have omnivariance. Omnivariance, I, I have to filter out a bit for you to see. So if I filter out this point, as you can see, which is noise, it is Scala field filter by value export, you see omnivariance allow us to, to find that uh, we have a lot of common variance in this area, whereas in the trees, yeah, something is happening. So that will be also useful. Verticality, also very nice, uh, D high and D low. This is beautiful. And then from there, what you can do is actually use that to um, very quickly create a label data set. Looking at the time that we spent already here, this will be for the next episode as well. And then you can also use these features combined with machine learning based on features that you engineered. So not deep learning, but like classical 3D machine learning to predict based on the label data that you constitute using this thresholding method. This is an absolute blast. And all of this is for an application to ground and tree classification that will be the objective. So for example, here, it's very easy to use the planarity or let's say verticality combined with this Z approach to filter out all the, the, the points on the ground. And then after using the high and the low to extract all the other things. And I can show you what I did in a matter of minutes, truly. I saved that in resources. I will load that, hopefully it works, so that you can see what you can expect as a result. Yeah. So this is my classified result that I did, I think, within one minute using this thresholding method, right? Where I have my trees, I have the ground, I have all the man-made objects, and I have the noise. And once you have that, you have a labeled data set that you created. So that's a way to use the thresholding method to create such a labeled data set that you can use then to um, use SVM or random forest or other classifier to extract a model, an AI model that will do the heavy lifting for you for the next unseen data set. And that's super, super powerful. So that's it guys, we passed through the full uh, set of feature extractions, right? Within this 10 step process. And I hope you enjoyed it. Please, if you did not yet do so, if you believe this is helpful to you, Please subscribe to the channel to get more of that, to leave comments, to share with me what you would like to see next, because I'm trying my best here to give you the best possible robust approaches using Python 3D tech in general to help you solve like real challenges identified in your professional or learning life, let's say, right? And um, yeah, hope you enjoyed it and see you in the next uh, video. Bye-bye. And that's a wrap on this part two with feature extraction and visualization and interaction within Python with PyVista and only three libraries. I truly hope that gave you a lot of value and now you have a very powerful mechanism or workflow, depending on what you prefer, which taxonomy is best, to attack really, really cutting edge problems linked with 3D point cloud datasets, right? If it helped you in any way, don't hesitate to subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to push more video in this context or leave a comment and tell me what you would like me to teach or shoot a video about and I will do my best to deliver on it. Continue pushing the frontiers of what we can do with 3D data, more than a word, and let's see each other in the next video. Bye-bye.